Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of the Coach's Corner. Today we have a very special guest. We have two-time second team All Big East, Big East Most Improved Player in 2000, the Big East All Rookie Team Member in 1997, a McDonald's All American in 1996, and the McDonald's All American Game MVP in that same game in 1996. We have St. Peter's Head Coach Shaheen Holloway. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing well, man. Just for you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show my face. I'm look I'm gonna look crazy, man. Yeah. You look great. You look way better than I do, I have to say. Well, I'm, I'm doing good, man. How are you? How's the family? They're doing good. Everyone's doing good over here. Everyone's healthy by you, I hope. Yeah, yeah, everybody's good. We're just taking it easy, you know, just taking it one day at a time. All right, so I do want to open up and ask you, obviously, Mac Coach of the Year. How does that feel? But, you know, it, it was, um, you know, it was, it was a team effort. You know, I think that everyone here played the part. You know, it was, a, you know, especially the players, the administration, the trainers. Everyone who was part of the team played played a big part in it. You know, my assistant coaches. So, you know, it was good. I just I was a little upset that the season ended the way it ended. You know, because we had a chance. I thought to win the whole thing and go go to the NCAA tournament. But you know, once you sit back and think about it, it was the right thing for the commissioner and the NCAA to do to shut things down. So, what what kind of goes into? Because now you have the reins. You went from assistant coach to a head coach. What have been like the challenges and what has been like? the best parts of it? Well, you know, it's, I thought last year, my first year was a little challenging, but, you know, I was prepared for it. I thought that, you know, Coach Kevin Willard did it. You know, he, uh, he, he was great to me. He gave me, a lot of, he gave me a lot of opportunities. He gave me a lot of leeway, you know, to run practice, you know, run the program, you know, in-game stuff. So, you know, I thought I was, I was ready for this opportunity. You know, I was with him for 11 years. You know, I thought I put my time in. And then when my time came, I thought the, the biggest difference was, you know, calling timeouts, you know, subs, you know, stuff like that, trying to keep people happy. But as far as everyday, everyday stuff, I was used to it because I was running practice a lot at Seton Hall. And like I said, Coach gave me the opportunity to do those things there. So do you think coming from that Seton Hall situation with Kevin Willard where you two kind of had to rebuild the program and create a culture has helped you coming into a St. Peter's program that kind of had a similar issue? Well, you know what? It was... Yeah, because, you know, when we first got together at Iona, we kind of built that up, too. You know, we, we was there for three years, and we took over the program that won two games. And then three years, we got it up to, like, 23 games, and then we got the C Hall job. And then we got the C Hall job. Then, you know, we had to build C Hall. It took some time to build that, and then we built that. So it was, you know, two programs that we helped build, and um, I was a major part of that. And, you know, like I said, Coach, you know, gave me a lot of leeway with that. So when I got to St. Peter's, you know, Coach Dunn had did a great job over here for 12 years. You know, but I just want to come in and establish my, my own thing, you know, and do things my way and put my input on the program. I mean, my imprint on the program. And that's kind of what happened. You know, it, the first year was kind of like up and down, you know. And then, then last year, this past year, it was kind of like a roller coaster as well because I had so many young guys. I had six freshmen and three sophomores that played a lot. And anytime you're playing young guys, it's, it's, it's going to be a roller coaster. Right. But it ended up being pretty good for us. You know, we had a pretty good year. Um, we did a lot of things this year that no one expected us to do except us. Um, you know, we got some, you know, I was happy for the guys that got the individual awards. I'm not a big awards guy, but, the, you know, my, my guys, you know, Aaron Stoddard got Rookie of the Year and Casey Adefo got Six Man of the Year and then he got Defensive Player of the Year. And then we had uh, three, three guys make all rookie team. So, you know, it was a good individual year for the guys. So I was happy for them because they put a lot of work in. So you spoke about doing things your way. What is the Shaheen Holloway way? Like, what are the cornerstones of how you like to run your team? And what is something that you look for in a team that you're trying to create? Because clearly your basketball resume is one of the best, I would say, in college basketball from your playing days and now to your coaching days. So what is kind of the Shaheen Holloway way? Just doing things, you know, the right way, you know, building it from the, from the ground up, taking it step by step, you know, no take, no shortcuts. Um, you know, come in every day and work extremely hard. Give me everything you got because I'm going to give you everything I got. Um, if you watch us play this this year, you watch us play my teams, you know, we're never going to be out of games because we just play so hard. Um, we're going to compete. Um, it's not going to be, be it's not going to be pretty all the time. Um, but you right. know, I kind of I coach the way I play. You know, I, I, I play with it with a chip on my shoulder. You know, I, I play with something to prove. And that's the way I coach. And that's the way my team plays you know we, we play with chips on our shoulders and something, something to prove every time we step on the court so you talked a little about your playing days I'd love to get into that because obviously 
1996, McDonald's All-American. You're playing the McDonald's All-American game. Can you kind of walk me through what it's like to be named as a McDonald's All-American? Because there's not a lot of people that get the chance to experience what that's kind of like. And not, and not disrespecting that, you know, this generation of basketball. Um, I just think back then it was just so hard. You know, it was so hard because you had so many guys that, that was playing on a high level that was competing. You know, you, you didn't have a lot of AAU teams. Everybody kind of like played on three or four AAU teams. So the teams was kind of stacked. So every game was kind of like really, really, really big. Right. Um, it was an old sneak award right now when you had, you know, Adidas and Under Armour and Nike it was just one AAU scene. You know, so everybody played on the same circuit. So that's what made it tough. Um, and then, like, you had to earn your stripes. And I, I feel good about the McDonald's game because I earned that. You know, it wasn't something that was given to me. It was something because of this or that. No, I earned it. Every night I went out there, I played against the best. I competed against the best. I performed against the best. And, um, you know, when I got you know, named McDonald's on American, it was a big honor to me because I was the first one at my school at, you know, St. Pat's to be named McDonald's on American. And, I was and then to not only play in that game, but also get MVP in that game with the names that played in it, such as Kobe Bryant, who tragically obviously passed away this year. But what was that kind of like getting the MVP honor in that game? Because not only did you get named, but you also showed up and you showed you know, I out. Don't want, I don't want to sound cocky and all like that, but that's something that I did against those guys all the time, you know. And, you know, it, it, was, it was big because, you know, like it was the first time I was playing against Mike Bibby and, you know, it depends on who you talk to. In the West Coast, they had him the number one guard. In the East Coast, they had him the number one guard. And we were supposed to play against each other in South Carolina at uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, uh, was a beach ball classic, I think. And then something happened with our team. I think his team lost, so we didn't get a chance to play him. So I always wanted to play against him. Because, you know, when you coming up, you always want to play against the best. You know, so I always wanted to play against him to prove right. the number one guard in the class. So when I got the chance to play against him, I was really excited. Um, I had a, both teams had real good teams, but my team was really stacked. I mean, you look at that team, the starting five was myself, you know, God bless the dead, Kobe, Tim Thomas, uh, uh, Steve Jackson, and, and Rich Hamilton. Like, you know, like all those. Those are pretty stacked teams. Guys, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that was the starting five. You know, you, you had so many guys come up the bench. It was just like, a dream come true playing against the, the best and the best. Um, so I went out there and just played my game, to be honest with you. I, I was just passing the ball at that game. I was, you know, it was the first time I had a bunch of players around me that could catch the basketball and finish. And, <laughs> right, right. You know, and, and I, was, I was just out there just giving assists and just, just trying to have some fun. So then going from there, you obviously went on to play at Seton Hall. What was kind of the decision process for the next step in Sheen Holloway's basketball career as a player? You know, that was a... It was a hard decision, you know, um, but the right decision to stay home for me. You know, if anyone knows me, everybody know I'm a family guy. You know, I don't, um, I don't like big atmospheres. I like small atmospheres. So being at St. Pat's was a small Catholic school. Then, you know, making the transition to Seahorn, which was a small Catholic school as well. I felt at home. Um, I thought uh, the coaching staff at the time made me feel like I was the number one guy for them for a long time. You know, and to this day, I still got close connections with them. You know, Greg Arenda, who's a coach at FDU, he recruited me. It's my guy. Um, coach George Blaney was the head coach. He was a tremendous guy. I still talk to him to this day. You know, Kerry Keating was on that staff, Mike Oaks. All these guys I still talk to. And it's great right. because, because you built this thing. And this come out, when I recruit, I tell my players the same thing. Like, this ain't about the next four years. It's about the next 40 years. You know, right. and, that, and as you can see, you know, I'm still being friends with these guys that recruited me 20-something years ago. It shows you that. Um, so, um, you know, it was tough because I had a lot of good schools that wanted me, you know, you know from right. Duke. You know, he came down to Duke and, and the University of Cal Berkeley, um, the school upstate, Syracuse, a uh, couple other schools that, you know, big, big schools. But when it came down to it, it came down with me being, I wanted to create my own thing. Like, that's always been who, who I was. Right. And when I went to St. Pat's, not too many people knew, knew about St. Pat's. When I left, everybody knew about St. Pat's. And now St. Pat's is a household name. So I kind of right. wanted to do that with C. Hall. Not that C. Hall wasn't known, but you know, C. Hall was kind of like in the down years, mm -hmm. you know, around that time, it was in the down years. So my thing was to, to go there and bring it back up and have people follow me there. And I thought, you know, once my four years was up, it kind of happened, you know. I left and then Andre Barrett and, you know, God bless the dead, Eddie Griffin came in with their number one class with Marcus Tony L. And I think it kind of started building from there. So, you know, I did what I, what I wanted to do. I, I created my own trend and, 
And that's who I've always been. And that's why well, I, I took the job at St. Peter's as well. You know? Right. You know, so many people told me don't take the job, not the job. But I say, you know what? Like, this is who I am. I never take the easy way out. You know, I, I like challenges. And, you know, it is what it, 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 is, what it, what it is. Well, first off, I'd like to thank you as a lifelong Seton Hall fan myself for starting that chain reaction because I don't know what the program would be where it is today if you didn't go out and take that risk and take a chance on a school like Seton Hall at that time. Hold on, so you're but, a lifelong um, Seton Hall guy, but you're, but you're a Providence guy too, man? I am a Providence guy too. That's where I go to college. <laughs> but you know what, I'll give you a pass because Ed Cooley's a good, good, he's a really good, good friend of mine, man. We love Ed Cooley. A uh, great, great guy. Doing, doing a great, great job up there. One of the best. He's really, he's figured out a system up there that works for him and he kills it yes, year in and year out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so we were talking a little bit about you as a player, and I asked Coach Kevin Willard the same thing. It's always interesting to me to think about players turned coaches, and I always wonder if Shaheen Holloway, the coach, would have recruited Shaheen Holloway, the player. Is that <laughs> someone that would have fit into his system and that he would have liked to coach? And That's a good question. Man. You know, it's, it's funny because, you know, no one, no one never asked me that before. You know, that, that's a really good question. You know what? I, I would say yes because – if you look at the guys I recruit, it's guys that fit my personality, you know. Right. And, and obviously, I fit my personality. So, right, um, right. you know, yeah, so I would love to coach a guy like myself because I know that as a coach, I would give that guy my all. And I know me, I would have gave my coach my, my all. You know, if you watch me play, every time I stepped on the court, I played like it was my last game. You know, I played right. with so much passion. I played with so much heart, you know, and, and that, I think that was separating me from a lot of people especially because of my size, you know, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't measure my, my heart. And um, so, yeah, I would have I would, I would, I loved to coach, you know, a guy like, like myself. That's funny. I, nobody never asked me that question. Was, that was, she, you know, I got to ask, was he someone that talked trash? Would he try to get in your head? Was he a little chippy away from the ball? If the ref wasn't looking, was he pulling on jerseys? What kind of player was she, you know, like, was he going out there to just give it to you every night or? You know what? I wasn't really a trash talker, man. You know, I like, I kind of let my game do the talking. Right. You know, obviously, sometimes you get caught up in the emotions of the game and, you know, whatever. But for the most part, I wasn't really a trash talker. You know, I, I, let, I let my game do the talking. Um, I was fiery. Mm -hmm. I was emotional. Um, sometimes I probably didn't handle things the correct way with teammates. You know, I probably should have talked to them a little different at times and stuff like that. You know, as you get older, you realize some of the things you do. You know, you don't want to show, show guys up. But for the most part, I just was a guy that wanted, that wanted to go up there and, out there every night and try to tear your head off. Like, right. I was... Like I, you know, to this day, I hate to lose. Now, I, I don't know, I play 2K two, two well, so my son plays and I play him every game, every day, and I'll try to beat him because, you know, that just took the breath of nature in me, you know? So, right. you know, I, like, I never wanted to lose. I still don't want to lose today. I'm, I'm a sore loser, you know? Um, but I'm a guy that, when I step on that court, you know it's business time. Right. Um, so every time I ask someone about Shaheen Holloway, the first thing they say is family man. Family is everything to him. And for being such a family man, what has been, like, what has becoming a father done for your career? You know what? It made me grow up fast. You know, I had my daughter. You know, one of the reasons why I, I wanted to stay close to Seton Hall, I had my daughter when I was in high school, you know, at a, at a, at a young age. And I wanted to be close to her, and I wanted to make sure that I was a father to her because my dad wasn't around. So I took, you know, pride in that. You know, and now, you know, I have my son, Xavier, and I just had a newborn son, Tyson. You know, uh, you know it's important. Family is everything to me, man. You know, it's, you know, it's, you know, Miss Clemens, my godmother, who, who passed away when I came to Jersey to stay with her. You know, she taught me the value of family and the importance of being a family. And I took that in, into my own family. And, um... You know, it helps me, you know, when I bring my son. So my son, every before every game, he, before every home game, even some of the away games when we go away that they come to, you know, he's standing on the national anthem line with me, you know. And, right. he, you know, and then he's the first one on the bench to give everybody how far that. Like, that's important to me to have that, you know, because that right. means everything to me. Like, that put a smile on my face, and that kind of get me going when the game start to make sure, you know, I see him and because he's my number one fan, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm – you know, obviously his, his hero, like he look up to me. So those things is important to me. And so, you know, to answer your question, like it's, it means everything to me. Dads are our heroes. And I'll tell you what, your son definitely has one of the best heroes out there from what I can tell. And um, so because of your love for your family and the way you see these kids, you've had a track record as a recruiter that is 
almost second to none to people who work at the programs you've worked at. Can you kind of walk me through you as a recruiter and how you operate and what your steps are to success with these kids? And You know what? It, it, it starts out with relationships, right? So anytime you come into this business that we're in, which is just a very crazy business, by the way, stay, stay, stay doing what you're doing. Don't, don't get too- <laughs> This is a, a crazy business. But it's all about relationships, right? So you want people to believe in what you're selling, right? So when I came to St. Peter's, so I'm going to start at St. Peter's, then I'm going to go back to Sea Hall, then I'm going to go to Iona. I'm going to go back to the folk. So, okay, no um, so when I came to St. Peter's, you know, what I was selling was myself. I wasn't really selling the school because I didn't really know too much about the school. So I was right. selling me and what I do and who I am. You know, and I think that's what you want to do when you are when you assistant coach. You want you want to sell you first. Like you want to get make make sure that the players and, the, and their families be comfortable with you first. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, everybody, everybody wants to have a relationship with the head coach. But what people understand when you when you get to college, the assistant coach is one of your best friends, especially you know, the guy who brought you in because the head coach gotta deal with so many different things. Right. You know, from the boosters to to emissions to things that's going on with the team and it's, it's 13 other guys. So it, it's a lot going on. So he's getting pulled 25 different ways. Uh, so, you know, I want to make, I want, I want to make sure I establish a relationship with those guys so they feel like they could trust me on and off the court. Like that was most right. important to me. Same thing with, with the parents, make sure they could trust me. Plus when I tell them something, my word is everything. So I want to make sure they, they understood when I, when I, what I tell them is what it's going to be. You know, I never told them things that they wanted to hear. I think right, that's okay. what, that's where a lot of people get, you know, in trouble when they start trying to cater to these kids. And, you know, you just got to be yourself and be honest and be truthful. And I learned that early on. And I, I lost a lot of kids because of that, but I gained a mm-hmm. lot of kids from that too. Because at the end of the day, people respect you more for being real and, and telling the truth. You know, just, just being someone that you come talk to me off the court. Like, I'm not, I'm not a coach where you, you could just talk to me on the court. Like, no, you come to my house. Like, my family is your family. I always right. been like, you know, I want to recruit guys that I want to bring home and have them around my, my son and around my, my wife because that's important to me. So, you know, you want to establish it yourself. Um, you want to establish, you know, you taking care of people's kids when they send them to you. So a lot of these AU guys, you know, they, they're really big with, you know, if I send my kid to you, you're going to make sure he's good. You're going to take care of him on and off the court. You're going to make sure, you know, you're there for him if you need to listen to air, whatever. So then you do that. So now when it's time to go get the next player, that guy, the high school coach, the AU coach said, you know what? He did right by my, my first kid. I'm going to send him another kid. You know, right, so okay. Do that. And then, you know, you want to be visible. Like, you have to be, you have to be visible in your area. So I took it upon myself to be visible in a metropolitan area where I'm out all the time and people are seeing me. And they, they see me work. You know, they, they right. see me. I'm not doing a lot of talking. I'm not talking a lot of trash. I'm just doing my job. I'm just here to make sure the kid, the family, AU coach, high school coach see me here. They, they see me working. You know, I don't, I never talked to guys on the phone for a long period of time. Cause I remember when I was a recruit, I mean, after a while, what I'm, what you really want to hear, you know, right, right, right. So, so, you know, you, you, you say your piece, you know, you, you check in and then you let guys go. I think a lot of coaches, you know, get the misconception of, you know, they got to talk to guys for a long period of time on the phone and stuff like that. That's why a lot of kids don't answer the phone. Cause at the end of the day, you don't have nothing to talk about. My right. worst thing is, I never want a kid to see the phone and see my name and not answer it. You're right. So, so my thing was, I hit them quick, hit them with a lot of information. I get them, I get out. So now they know, okay, when I ask this coach Holloway call, he's not going to be long, he's going to be quick, but he also going to give me information you need. He's checking in. So those things, like, like I said, just start making people feel comfortable. Make sure you get in contact with everybody. Because the smallest person in that person crew or in, in that, that person surrounding might have the biggest voice for them. So I don't, you know, whether it's, you know, when you go to a, to a high school, it might be a teacher, right? It might right. be the teacher. It might be the guy in the lunchroom. It might be the principal. It might be somebody. So I make sure I have connections with all those people. So now when everybody come together, they go, you know what? He did his, he did his due diligence. He really did his job. He made everybody feel comfortable. And, I, you know, that's kind of, kind of what I, you know, my little thing to it. I can see how much that your team and these kids really mean to you. Do you see yourself as more than just a basketball coach? I feel like talking to you, it seems like this really means way more to you than just the game of basketball. And that's really refreshing to see. And I just 
want to see if that's how you kind of see it, if you're more than just a basketball coach. Well, I tell kids all the time, you know, you know it's, it's more than basketball when it, when it comes to me and my program. Even when I was an assistant coach, you know, and that's, that, that's what we did at Iona, that's what we did at Senior Hall, that's what I'm doing now in St. Peter's. You know, basketball is a very small part of what we do as coaches, you know, because we, right. we wear a lot of different hats. I mean, we slash everything, you know, you slash coach, slash God's counselor, slash, you know, you know, big brother, slash uncle, slash father figure, you know, slash strength. You know, you, you like, mm-hmm. you slash everything, <laughs> wear different hats. You know, it, it all depends on the individual. But with me, I take it, you know, I, t- I take pride in, you know, getting to know my guys off the court more than on the court. Because you got to, you know, when you, you, you see a guy come to practice and you look at his face, like, you know, okay, today might not be his day. Right? So now let me right. back up a little bit. You know, let me, you know, ask him. Now now it's time to be the, the friend, not the coach. You know, everything is good at home. You, you okay? What's going on? Because he may have something going on in his life that's outside of basketball. It might be somewhere his girlfriend. He might be somewhere his mom, might be something, you know, back home, might be something in the classroom where he's just struggling. So he might need, need some time just to get away for a day. Also, might need to just talk to you on a different level. Right. You know, and those things that I pick up on, and, you know, I'm big with that. You know, I, I, could, I still, as a, as a head coach, I still get to practice 45 minutes before practice starts. And I go down there and I talk to guys. Right. And that's my time to talk to them kind of away from the court a little bit and see what's going on with them see how they feeling, you know, see what, you know, if you're having a bad day, because I need to know that type of stuff as a coach, you know, right, so, right. you know, so, you know, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, I take pride in that. It seems like you really run the team as a family and at least a lot of programs that I was around as a kid and that you kind of see around the media, it seems as though it's almost like a factory where you're just trying to churn out the next NBA guy or trying to get the next player of the league. And it seems like you really have created a family. Do you think that that has really contributed to the success you've been able to build at St. Peter's in just two short years? Absolutely. You know, the one thing that we always did when I, when I was at Seton Hall and, and at uh, Iona and at St. Peter's, you know, it's not about the best player, right? It's about the, the right player for you, right? right. And you're not going to get always get the five-star player. You're not going to do that. So you got to get, like, at Seton Hall, we're like, okay, let's get the three-star player and make him a five-star player. You know, All right, okay. you know, at St. Peter's, I'm not getting the, I'm going to get the, the one-star player, maybe not no-star players, you know, and I got to make them a two-star player or a three-star player, you know, and, and that goes from our skill development. The skill development is a major part of what we do every single day. So every coach have they, they think about who they are and what they do. So me, you know, it's skill development. I take okay. guys, I work with them every single day, I make them better. I make them feel good about themselves. I make them feel like they overachievers. And I'm because when you make sure when you make guys feel good about themselves and give them confidence, they play harder for you and they play beyond what they can ever expect, right? Like be beyond. Right. So so my thing is we, we come in every day and we work. Because there's no substitute for hard work, right? We work. And we work and we work and we work. And the day off, come back, work and work and work. And right. when guys see themselves getting better. Like, oh, this works. So now I'm going to buy in more. Right, right, right. Okay. And then the, the good thing for me is I'm still not, I'm not that, that old. So I can still get on the court and show them. <laughs> right. Now, with, and I, what I, I have learned with this generation, like showing them is more than telling them. You know what I mean? Like, so, right. okay, I'm going to get on the court and I'm going to show you how to do this. And they're like, oh, coach, what are we talking about now? Because now I'm showing you it works. Now we're watching film. Now you've seen it. I'm showing you a film, this type of stuff. So to answer your question, we just, you just kind of build your program the way you want to build it. I don't think you should build it the way society or the media or anybody wants you to build it. Like this past year, for example, right? I play 11, 12 guy double figure minutes. Everybody's yeah. killing me. Everybody's killing me for it, right? They're killing me, killing me. But it worked for us, right? We, like, we kind of wore team down. But here's the crazy thing now. Now the media, pitch that in the media, like, yo, why would kids want to go to St. Peter's? Because... They only, they only play half the game. And now kids start to read that type of stuff and it's kind of hurting us a little bit. Right, right. So instead of saying, you know what? Wow, he's doing something that we haven't seen in a long time. Instead of embracing it, people's kind of like, like, it's like anything, people want to talk about it, right? Right, right. And my thing is, I'm not changing who I am. Mm-mm. This is what I do.
I mean, coach, if you were 70 years old, I'm pretty sure you could still give me 25, five and 10 on the court. So I don't know about you being too old and not be able to play, but I do want to talk a little bit about- I could shoot better now. I could shoot better now. <laughs> now sure, because now I can't drop as much. Now I'm a, I'm a, I'm a better shooter. <laughs> Relying on that jump shot, that smooth J? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a better shooter now, yeah. Um, so I do want to, I asked Coach Will this, and I definitely want to ask you this. What is some advice you would give to a kid that's either my age or a little bit older that wants to get into the coaching game and is just trying to figure it all out? What is some advice that you have for them on how to start their careers? Like, what are the first building blocks that Don't you should focus coaching. on? them? Don't get into coaching. <laughs> <laughs> um, the truth is that just build relationships. You know, be a sponge. You know, learn, learn everything from the ground up. Like, just don't try to start up. Like, I think the one thing that I'm really proud about is, you know, with my name and my, my reputation, I started from the ground up. Like, so a lot of people get into coaching and they just kind of get a, a, a college job because their name, not me. Like, you know, I, I started in high school. I was assistant coach in high school for Bloomfield Tech. Right. You know, with Coach Nick Marinell. Then I came to, to work for Bobby Gonzalez my first year at CEO, and I was a video guy. You know, so then from the video guy, I went and worked at Iona with Coach Willard, and I was the third guy. Then I kind of moved my way up. So I would say learn, learn it from the ground up, learn everything, especially right now. In this day and age, you got to learn this, all this technology with the computers and learn how to do film and editing and all that stuff. Learn everything. Just be a sponge. You know, be, a, be, a, be around people that's positive that, you know, you want to learn from. You know, um, I think early on in my career, I learned what helped me out the best is learning what not to do. I don't right. know if that makes sense to you. You know, everybody want to learn what to do, what to do. No, I learned what not to do. And that kind of helped me out when, when I was younger in my career. And now I'm moving forward. I still use that same thing, kind of learn what, what not to do. Um, so to answer your question, like, you know, just learn everything from the ground up. Surround yourself around, you know, good, positive people that want to help you. Be a sponge. Don't, don't be a person that I know it all. You right. know, like I said, learning from the ground up. Like, like learn every spot. Learn every spot learn everything, you know, from the basketball operations guy to the video guy to the coaches, like learn every spot. And then when you get there, like Coach Willard did, like this is one thing I, why I love him to this day, like he didn't want assistant coaches to want to be assistant coaches. Like he wanted you to want to be a head coach. So he gave me right. everything that I needed to be a head coach. Like he, I remember our first conversations, you know, I don't want you to come here just to be a recruiter. I don't want you to come here just to be this. I want you to come here, I want you to learn everything. You know, and that and right. some coaches don't do that. Some coaches kind of, you know, trying to kind of like hold you to certain things. He let you do everything. And I think that was one of the reasons why I am where I am today because I learned all that stuff under him. And I do that with my sister coaches now. I'm like, don't just be a recruiter. Don't just be a video guy. Don't just right. be a basketball guy. Try to be everything. And um, I think I would, I would say that, you know, for a young guy, try to learn everything. You know, you know but, you know, do more listening than talking though. So I think a lot of young guys, everybody want to talk and say what they could do and kind of put their foot in their mouth. No, nope, just do more listening. Everywhere that you get challenged, you seem to conquer the challenge every step of the way, whether it's from Iona to rebuilding the program with Kevin to back to Seton Hall with Kevin, getting some of the best recruiting classes that Seton Hall's ever seen and now taking on the challenge at St. Peter's at a team that to most in the MAC was going to be the doormat that you've turned into a serious challenger for league titles and in your second year winning the MAC coach of the year and finishing in the top five. Where do you see Shaheen Holloway in five years? I know it's a tough question, but I just, I your growth seems like it can't be capped. You know, the crazy thing, I don't know where I see Shaheen Holloway in, in next year. Now, uh, <laughs> you know, it's crazy with this thing going on. You know what? I just, like, I just want to get better every day at my, at my craft. You know, so it's funny because this morning I'm up watching games from this past year, taking a lot of notes. And my son, I'm like, what are you doing? My wife, like, what are you doing? I'm like, I got to get, get better. You know, and I'm doing that every single day. You know, I watch film every single day. And that's because I just want to, you know, when, when you get to a spot and you see things, it's kind of like, like a guy that's working out, right? So right. it's a guy that's working out, or, or not even a guy, you know, a girl, whoever that's working out. And you're in, and you're in the weight room, you're looking at mirror and you're like, you start, you start seeing your arm, you start like, oh, okay. Like, right, right, right. I'm like, I want to, you know, I want to do more now, right? So it's kind of like, that's how I am now. Like, like, yeah, okay, there was a little bit of success, a little bit, not much, a little bit of success. Okay, I want more now. Like, I'm hungry. Like, right. I'm starving. Like, if anybody know me, if you know me, you know 
I'm I'm self motivated. I don't need no one to motivate me. I don't need people to say, you know, oh, you got to pick last, use that motivation. No, no, no. I'm motivated from the door. Right. Like, I'm ready to go. So, um, in five years, I just want to see myself continue to, to keep growing as a man, as a husband, as a father, you know, as a coach. I just want to get get better, you know, and wherever that may lie, you know, wherever that that lands me, so be it, you know. Um, I just want to grow and just, you know, continue to, to keep improving every single day and, and, and working on myself. Well, Coach, I don't want to take up too much of your afternoon, so I'm going to get to my last question here, and it's kind of the more fun portion of it. So I'd like if you could give me three albums you'd want the, li- the listeners to listen to that mean a lot to you and that you think are the best, maybe one movie, and then since you talked about 2K, I got to know who your squad is. Three albums, huh? X, you got three albums for us? Yeah. Who you got? My album. Who? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my son like hip hop too. Um, I'm an old school guy, right? right. So I went to an old school. So I would say, um, I would say, you know, the no- Notorious Big, you know, Life After Death, you know, that's because okay. it's a double CD. It was actually really cool. You know, that's a really good album. Um, because I'm from New York, because I'm from Queens, I gotta say Nas. Nice. You know, no Nas, you know. And I was I would say two albums from Nas. I would say, you know, uh Illmatic and Stillmatic. So so both of those albums was, was really good. And then and the the third one, you know, I go back and forth because I love Jay Z, but I love Jay Kiss as well. You know, right, so, okay. You know, so you know, you I kinda go back and forth and Jay Z is a, and Jay Z is like the GOAT, but Jay Kiss is my favorite artist because his lyrics just it just take me places where, you know. So I would say I would, I would say Jenny Kiss. Not none of his albums, just more of his freestyles. Okay. It's more of his freestyles and more of his mixtapes. Like, you know, when, when he's, you know, guest appearance, all the people's songs, he's like, he's a monster. So, you know, I would say, you know, uh, a J.D. Kiss uh, mixtape. Okay. So I go with uh, Tori is Big, Nas, and, and, and J.D. Kiss. Um, uh, my favorite movie. See, now, I'm a, I'm a big movie guy. Big like, movie guy. Okay, let's hear it. Now, so I don't just have just one movie, so it's really hard to say just one movie. I'm a big, big movie guy. Um, I would say my favorite movie. Your favorite movie? What's Daddy's favorite movie? Let's see if you know Daddy. Daddy? You know me. He knows you. Yeah, how you know that? <laughs> so, yeah, so um, Bad Boys is one of my favorite movies. You know. Okay. Uh, Obviously, there's 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 three bad boys out right now. You know, there's one, two, and three. But I also like Goodfellas because I'm a big mobster guy, so I like Goodfellas. Oh, uh, okay. I like Godfathers. You know, I like I like all those movies. But I would say, you know, Bad Boys. You know, one is one of my favorite movies. And 2K, I don't have a favorite team because my son's favorite team is the Bucks because he played with Giannis. He wanted to score a thousand points. Right. Okay. You know, I just pick a different team every time. Yeah. I'm not very good, so. Yeah, he does. <laughs> You know, so my favorite there. Yeah, so my favorite team outside of 2K. Now we're not very good. It's the Knicks. You know, I stick with my teams. You know, we we're not very good, but I stick with New York. That's my team. Just like the Mets, it's my team. You know, we're not right, very right. Good. And you know, the Raiders is my. So those, you know, my team. We're not very good, but I stick with them. I'm, I'm loyal. Um, I'm a lifelong Nets fan, so I know that struggle all too well. Okay, well welcome to the club, then. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on, Coach. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy man. I love this conversation. Hopefully. When this is all over, maybe we can get together in person, listen to some NAS and watch Bad Boys. But well, well, uh, thank you so much well, for coming on. Well, well, who's your three albums? My three albums right now. So um, I hate to say it because I know it's pretty mainstream, but I'm a, I'm a big Drake guy. I love hip hop. So I would have to say Nothing Was the Same by Drake. Oh, that's a tough one. I haven't thought of my three albums in a long time. I'd have to go Nothing Is the Same from Drake. He just put out. Um, a really interesting mixtape mix that I literally can't put down called Dark Lane Demo Tapes. Last night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I listened to it last night. It was, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. It was all over the place. Yeah, it was, I thought, I, I like when he's versatile and he's dynamic and he switches from come at your neck rapper to R&B singer because that's just the, I, I grew up with a dad that listens to Jackson Brown 100% of the day. So you okay. kind of get used to that slow, melodic singing. And nah, it's nah, nice nah, to see nah, that from a, nah, a hip hop nah, guy. So what's your other two? I'm not going to let you off the hook now. So I got Nothing is the Same by Drake. 
I'd have to go the dark lane demo tapes. And then, you know, it's, it's a toss up because I have so many favorite artists and they have a lot of great albums, but I think I'd have to go with new music out. And I would say my third would have to be the new Toronto three by Tory Lanez. I just oh, really like, nice. okay. I really That's like, yeah. I, I really like the singers in hip hop because I think their flows are super melodic and it's super dynamic. And I don't know, I kind of, those would have to be the three that I listen to right now. That's good. How about your movie? My movie? Oh, you know, I'm a big Will Ferrell guy and he yeah. kills me in every role he does. And I think I'd have to say semi-pro if you've ever seen that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a movie guy. I told you, man, I watch a lot of movies, especially now. Jeez. Yeah, you know, I know. I've been. I'm, I'm a movie guy. You know, I'm a, I'm a movie guy. You know, it's, you know, it's, it, it kind of keep things going right now. It, it put things in perspective, you know, just having fun and just, I need to laugh. It's, right? Like right now, you, you need to laugh as much as you can. I know, for sure. For sure. It's been, this quarantine has been tough on everyone. Yeah. yeah but. Yeah. but. You know what, man? Um, I want to appreciate, you know, I want to thank you for having me on, but, you know, Keep doing what you what you're doing, man. This is big, you know, for everybody to have a especially, you know, have a with with everything that's going on right now, for you to have a chance to have your, your own podcast and you know get get a chance to talk to talk to coaches and pick guys' brains, you know, especially right now. You know, people need need to hear a lot of positive stuff. Right. So thank you for this. I, I appreciate it. Um anything I can do to help you out, man, don't hesitate to hit me. Coach, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming on. Hope you can get another win today in 2K, maybe if you play your son, but I'd have to say I'm rooting for him in this one. Well, he's, he's going to beat me. He is. Because, <laughs> you know, because, you know, I asked him yesterday to pick, that, that's, that's pick bad teams, and his, his bad teams are the, all the good teams. So. <laughs> but, you know, uh, we actually going to play you guys this year again at Providence. Okay. Yeah, so I'll see gonna, you there then. Uh, yeah, so we're going to play up to you guys. Hopefully, Ed Cooley take it easy on you again. <laughs> I'm sure he's not going to be able to take it easy out of you, Shaheen. You're an animal on your own. All right, well, I thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you.